I was wondering if we could put maybe one in the front and then one in the back. Can you imagine if your wheel was here and you lost by like that much out in the finish line? You're like, damn! Gotcha, bitch! <laughs> you put it over here. All right, guys. So today we got another diamond back. I'm gonna give uh, this moment of silence so we can go through. You guys, uh, actually, you guys gotta know me. There's no silence. I don't know if you recall one of the uh, one of the posts I put on our IG, how we strained these things out. This thing was all mangled up, but we went in and we filed it. We strained it. Yes, it's still three eighths, but look how perfect we got that. So yes, we could do that for you guys. Frame's been re chrome Really nice. It's nice. Got the double dropout. Oh, guys. As I mentioned, this is not the first one we've done. This is not the last one. And the serial number's on the inside. That indicates that this is a Japanese made diamond back. So, it's not the one on the bottom bracket, which is China or wherever, you know, Istanbul. I don't know. But this is the Japanese one. It's been really well done, really well chrome, really good customer of ours that went and did that. Here is the series of parts we're gonna put in. Okay, from the top, we got the uh, Tauga Bear Trap. Guys, the uh, Tauga Bear Trap is the original one. It's the one I like. It's loose ball, but it fits very good. It's got this lock ring washer on there, so the headset won't come loose on this. Then after that, we got the Diamondback stem. This thing is pristine, 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 guys. Look at that. Stem's gonna clamp down on old school racing bars, uncut aluminum. And right, look at the back sweep on this, guys. Look at this. You're gonna be riding, you're gonna be riding like, you know, this. And then after that, we're gonna put on these grips. Guys, these are not Oakley. They're not Oakley, but they are actually dated. Okay. Now, you guys are looking at it. You know what, guys? I remember actually riding on these. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Throw bar spin on these, Max. Heck you think, no. You think, look, it's more Dude, I would die. That it's would catch my pinky so quick. We built all these old school builds with MCS lightning cable. Why? It's because they have such a cool array of colors. Uh, they, they do all the classic colors. And you know what? It, it's a really good brand. The brake lever, it's going to be a die comp. Die comp vintage brakes here. And we go down to the bottom, we got some Sagino cranks with the uh, Sagino chain ring. Sipos, just a nothing fancy, just an aluminum pipe. No, no particular brand. Diamondback C clamp. And just a cash must see to tie that all up. I know there's a couple parts missing, but as we're gonna go, as it, it's arriving, because some stuff is delayed. Now, you guys might be asking, going, Wow, where did he get these brand new cranks and this brand new stem? These actually has been all been refinished. There's an anodizer. This thing right here, if you gotta look carefully, this is actually an old stem that has been refinished. Same people that refinished these. So all this stuff besides the brakes have been re-anodized. The sprocket has been repolished and re-chromed. So, there you guys have some of it. We're gonna build it. But, before I go on, my public announcement, keep all the hate message to yourself, okay? There's a couple guys on there engaging in arguments with other people. We don't need that, dude. Get off of the channel. Go somewhere else, dude. Okay, guys? So, but back in. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna grease this thing up. You guys know the routine. Feel a little sexy today. We're gonna submit the, the brush. We're gonna press the headset, we're gonna press the bottom bracket. Nothing new, nothing old, all right? Tioga. Okay. I've heard people say Tioga. Tio I, I don't know, man. Potato, potato. Hey, send me a message on, on our IG with your recording. The recording of you saying it the right way. Okay, Tioga, Tioga. Oh crap, you know what? Hmm. I'm toasting a bagel. Oh. <laughs> Come here. Oh, God damn it. Burnt it again. I'm always burning my bagel. Guys, I love bagels. Okay, the burnt bagels, it's all right. <laughs> Got that in. 
I'm going to grease the bearing up after I pack everything in. What you guys comment? What do you guys consider vintage? How many years does it have to be to, for it to be vintage? Not too hard. Look, look. So I could tighten it a little bit more, but I don't. You go and you get this, and see, it'll loosen up. It'll loosen up. And this is what I like about this this particular wash. This particular headset is these splines. When you put this thing in here, and normally when you tighten this thing down, it turns this on the on the other style headset. This one won't. This one keeps it in there. You don't have to lock up the caps. This is the bottom bracket, just a traditional loose ball. Square taper, guys. This is what a square tapered is. Just a square that is tapered. Not a 19 mil, not a 22. These type of cranks, most road bike cranks, old school square tapered. As you tighten it in, the tapered on it tightens it up and it makes it stiff. This is what I consider square taper, a lot of old school. I'm not sure if you guys see what we're watching. How many of you guys watch this? This is what was it? Fresh a fit? Some of these girls on here are crazy, man. If you guys are ever curious on which way this thing goes, if it goes like this or like this, see how, the, see how these holes are counter sunk in? That is so this thing can sit flush. Instead of on here, it sits on top. So it doesn't go like this. It goes like this. So then the bolts are sitting flushed in it. So for the stem guys, I don't know if you guys, how often you guys work on it, but since we work on bike all the time, this stuff always gets stuck inside the frame because it's steel and the frame is steel, so it rusts. So you know what? I like to put a thin layer of, of grease on there and, and it will not slip. Are you guys hearing this? We go all the way down. I like to give, have a little bit of that. It's crazy that these old school stem guys are not knurled and, and the stem is all smooth. <laughs> I can't imagine you guys are hearing the stuff that we're watching here. <laughs> Hello, Epic BMX. Yes, this is Seymour. Oh, man, look at this thing. This thing can like fly. Look at this. You guys see how I'm holding this? That's what you guys don't do. You guys don't hold it when you guys tighten it. Sometimes this thing pops up and it breaks the chain. Gonna put it in sideways. You hear that snap? It's in. You put this thing on. See how it's hanging out like that? Put this chain breaker on. I'm gonna hold this chain down, guys. Push this, and when it stops, make sure that thing is aligned. I'm gonna go ahead and press it through. Watch. You're gonna see it peep through. Go. You gotta notice there's two dropouts. So we're trying to determine if we're gonna go for the championship round or the qualifying round. So I was wondering if we could put maybe one in the front and then one in the back, you know, and try to... You know, a little half and half. Yeah, just in case, just in case, you know, can you imagine if your wheel was here and you lost by like that much in the finish line, you're like, damn! Gotcha, bitch! <laughs> 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 you put it over here. That was good. That was really good. <laughs> <laughs> this video is gonna blow up. I'm so yeah. Hello, epic. Lots more here and there that are super comfortable. Yeah, Julia just told me she's taking me out on a hot date, so I gotta go. Oh, you're taking them to the sauna room. Okay. <laughs> Not. Okay. okay, usually these kind of adjustment, the stem and all that, I like to adjust it once it's on the ground because 
I could see it more aligned than when it's up here and it's a little bit more solid so this guy so I'm almost done because of the nature of the bike this bike is not gonna be ridden like extremely hard or even hard at all it's probably just gonna be to pedal so they're not gonna be any bunny hop where you're pulling and stuff like that so I'm not gonna really tighten this down super tight or even the proper torque because I just don't want to crush the bars and uh, yeah mainly it okay solid so I don't know I don't know if any of you guys do this but if you guys notice how the seat the seat and seat post you don't see the clamp showing on here it was something that I've been doing since I was a little kid believe it or not guys kids used to pay me to do that where I just tuck it under there some of you guys might think it's not rocket science it's all that and it really isn't but you know apparently people did not do it so I was getting like five bucks from the kids to do all that kind of stuff but how many of you guys do this how many of you guys do this where you guys tuck the seat gutter in there or is this the first time you guys seen this okay guys so there you, there you have it it's finished this is a, an early year 1980 Diamondback Japanese model you know I already talked about this but I'm gonna get a recap the bars the Diamondback stem the Sugino cranks the hub the rims seat posts those have all been redone it looks like it's NOS. It could probably be lied about that's NOS, but it's not. These are all been redone uh, properly. A lot of you guys, I know you guys are out there trying to find the perfect anodize, but you know what? This is definitely the way to do it. Just find yourself an anodizer and just give them everything and they'll refinish everything and look like brand new. So um, what do you guys think? Comment in. Uh, I like it. I like the combination. I like the combination of things. There's no pedal on here because the pedal says to come in. Tell me what you guys have done different if this was done right. You guys share, subscribe, and yeah, later.